The United States Air Force has some of the most technologically advanced weapons in the world. But when it comes to fighter jets and taking control of the skies, the US Air Force has something that no other military can match. The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor defines air dominance with its unique combination of stealth, speed, agility, situational awareness and its lethal long-range air-to-air and air-to-ground weaponry. This single-seat, twin-engine, all-weather stealth tactical fighter is considered a fifth-generation fighter aircraft and was the very first in the world. In 1985, the US Air Force began to focus on both its stealth and supercruise abilities, and by 1986, Lockheed and Northrop had been selected to enter a competition to build the new jet which would replace the F-15 fighter jets. Lockheed's team completed their provisional YF-22 model in 1990, and Northrop's team completed their provisional YF-23 model in 1991. After an extensive testing period, the Lockheed YF-22 was deemed to be the winner because it was both stealthier and faster than the YF-23. The first production F-22 was unveiled April 9, 1997, at a rollout ceremony by Lockheed Martin, Boeing and Pratt & Whitney, and by September 7 of the same year, the F-22 made its first flight. In 2005, it formally entered service as the F-22A after more than 3,500 test flights over eight years and achieved full operational capability in December of 2007. During an exercise in Alaska in June 2006, 12 F-22s downed 108 adversaries with no losses and in exercises amassed 241 kills against just two losses in air-to-air -air combat. The F-22 measures 62 feet 1 inch in length with a wingspan of 44 feet 6 inches and stands 16 feet high. Empty, it weighs 43,340 pounds but has a max takeoff weight of 83,500 pounds. The body of the plane is made up of a significant amount of high strength materials to withstand stress and heat of sustained supersonic flight. The aircraft consists of 39% titanium-64 and titanium-62222, 24% thermoset composites and 15% aluminium. Of all these, the thermoset composites are perhaps the most unique, being composed of approximately 50% epoxy resin and 50% bismalamide. This special material is what makes up all the F-22's exterior skin, ensuring high strength and high temperature resistance. To top this off, a number of thermoplastic composites that are highly durable have also been incorporated into the plane's materials. However, due to them being extremely hard to implement, they've only been used on items that are opened frequently or that sustain regular damage from debris, such as landing gear and weapon bay doors. Regarding the wings, the F-22 Raptor was designed with clipped delta wings with reverse trailing edge sweep and leading edge extensions running to the upper outboard corner of the inlets. Delta wings are notable because the triangular form helps increase aerodynamics and enhances high speed during supersonic flight. The F-22 is powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW100 augmented turbofans that deliver 26,000 pounds of thrust each and 35,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner for a total of 70,000 pounds of thrust. With that amount of power, the aircraft can achieve a maximum speed of Mach 2.25 and can supercruise at Mach 1.82 and has a service ceiling of 65,000 feet. The Raptor has a thrust to weight ratio that is nearly at unity with what would be considered to be the absolute maximum, and its resulting high cruise speed and operating altitude make it extremely capable in surviving against ground defense such as surface to air missiles. The secret to its incredible maneuverability is the presence of vectoring nozzles in the F-22's exhaust, as they can redirect thrust more than 20 degrees up or down extremely quickly, allowing the jet to perform maneuvers that no other fighter jet can hold a candle to. Interestingly enough, it's also largely thanks to these thrusters that the F-22 has a typical combat speed of Mach 1.5 at 50,000 feet, with a maximum speed of Mach 1.8 without using external stores and Mach 2.25 when external stores and afterburners are utilized. To top this all off, the F-22 has an impressive ferry range of 1,800 miles, meaning that it can get from London to Moscow by air with distance to spare with its two external fuel tanks. The speed and range are complemented by an extremely advanced avionic system. 
The plane collects both sensor fusion and radar data from mechanisms located around the plane, with the most notable being a passive radar detector with more than 30 antennas blended into the wings and fuselage for all-round radar warning receiver coverage. This radar has a range of over 250 nautical miles, allowing the plane to detect far-off threats and initiate several defense mechanisms. It can then use the data collected to designate targets for allies and coordinate friendly aircraft. The plane also has low observable active aperture electronically scanned array that can track multiple targets under any weather conditions and can emit frequencies at more than 1,000 times per second in order to avoid detection from enemies. When combined with added features such as the F-22's automatic ground collision avoidance system, it's clear that the fighter jet's avionics truly are elite. An analysis of the cockpit reveals some top-of-the-line technology as well. The very first cockpit made completely out of glass, the monochrome head-up display offers a wide field of view that's displayed upon six-color LCD panels. The jet is mainly controlled by a force-sensitive side-stick controller and a pair of throttles. With radio functionality, communications, navigation and autopilot data all being incorporated into one streamlined module. Best of all, the pilot is fully protected in case the situation within the jet becomes dire, as they are required to wear a suit that protects against chemical and biological hazards, cold water immersion, counter G-forces and low pressure at high altitudes. When you then further consider that the F-22 even comes with an ejection seat, it's clear that it really was made with every possible emergency situation in mind. Last but certainly not least are the F-22 Raptor's armaments. Sporting three main weapon bays, the jet has a number of different types of armaments on board. One of the most impressive is its single 20mm M6182 Vulcan rotary cannon. This six-barreled, air-cooled Gatling-style cannon can fire 20mm rounds at an insanely high rate of about 6,000 rounds per minute. This firepower is supported by several onboard missiles, which are split up into two different loadouts depending on the mission. The first is the air-to-air -air mission loadout, which has six AIM-120 AMRAAM medium-range missiles and two AIM-9 Sidewinder short-range missiles. The AIM-120 AMRAAM is capable of all-weather day and night operations and is designed to employ active transmit-receive radar guidance instead of semi-active receive-only radar guidance. This is of benefit because it allows the missile to be a fire-and-forget weapon, meaning that once it's deployed, it does not have to actively be monitored by the pilot. On the other hand, AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, which were first introduced to the US Air Force in 1964, are one of the most widely used air-to-air -air missiles across both NATO countries and Russia. As a result, while not as high-tech as the AIM-120s, they're still extremely capable weapons. However, while this air-to-air -air loadout works well against other jets and bombers, the F-22 has an air-to-ground mission loadout when performing a land-based mission. In this setup, it instead sports two rather than six AIM-120 AMRAAM medium-range missiles, two AIM-9 Sidewinder short-range missiles, and either two 1,000-pound JDAM bombs or eight 250-pound GBU-39 small-diameter bombs. Both of these bomb variations have different uses, with the JDAM bombs being extremely large yet pretty accurate due to both their integrated inertial guidance system and their GPS while the GBU-39 bombs are smaller but even more accurate as they use not just an inertial guidance system and GPS but also radar, infrared homing and semi-active laser guidance to accurately hit their targets consistently. Yet it's the F-22's hard points that truly distinguish it as a world-class fighter. In the case of the F-22, these hard points are four external underwing pylon stations that can be fitted to carry 600-gallon drop tanks or weapons, with each pylon station having a capacity of 5,000 pounds. These are extremely useful because they allow the F-22 to support ground operations as it can airdrop supplies and materials to an army fighting below. In short, it is these capabilities that make this fifth-generation fighter one of the world's premier stealth jets. But despite all that performance, these aircraft are anything but cost-effective. After all, considering that it has a $150 million production cost per unit, an insanely high $334 million lifetime preservation cost per unit, and costs at least $65,000 in fuel and maintenance for every hour flown, these fighter jets certainly aren't cheap, with the total program cost being upwards of $67.3 billion as of 2010. 
Many believe that it would have made sense to sell some of these aircraft to other countries to offset some of the program's cost. However, in July of 1997, while Congress was working through the 1998 Department of Defense Appropriations Act, it was agreed that, quote, none of the funds made available in this act may be used to approve or license the sale of F-22 advanced tactical fighter to any foreign government. As a result, despite the F-22 Raptor attracting heavy interest from Australia, Japan and Israel, it's been the subject of a strict export ban that the US Congress has consistently upheld over the years. There are also several other aspects of the F-22 that set it apart from the rest. One of the most impressive facts about this aircraft is its radar cross-section, which is so small that its presence on radar would appear to be that of a bumblebee making it look about 40,000 times smaller than it truly is. It is this feature that makes it nearly undetectable. Yet this feature is accentuated by the fact that an F-22 fighter is especially deadly. So deadly that it has a ridiculously high kill ratio of 108 to 0. Even though the F-22 program was cancelled and no more jets are being built, it doesn't mean that the F-22 is done. Upgrades are now being done on the jet, and it's being used as a test bed for more advanced technology, and it could be a test plane for a completely new jet aircraft we've not even seen or heard of yet. That said, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up to date with all things military, and you'll be the first to know when we have a new video for you. Thanks for watching.